Welcome back to Los Angeles Coliseum. Vic Rauter along with Graham Leggett as we bring you game two of this 96 Gold Cup. You see the two captains at midfield. Number six, Colin Miller for Canada. And the referee, Ronald Gutierrez. It is 23 degrees Celsius. That's low 70s. It's humid and there's just a slight breeze. As we take a look at the starting 11 now for Canada and Bob Linarduzzi makes one change. Makes one personnel change, two positional changes. Forrest and Goal, the back four, Fraser, Fennec, Yallop and Miller. The midfield four, Holness, Hooper, Unger and Radzinski comes into midfield. Up front, Bunbury and Carlo Corazin. The starting 11, their Olympic team under 23. Dida is their goalkeeper, their coach, Mario Zagallo. And they're playing with a 3-4-3. Dida and Goal, Zamaria. Narciso and Carlinos, the back three in midfield. Conchecao, Luis, Amaral and Arofsen. And up front, the three strikers, Caio, Savio and Jameli. The officiating crew, the referee is Mr. Ronald Gutierrez. He is from Costa Rica. Near side linesman is Owen Powell of Jamaica. Eric Zeffrin from the Netherlands Antilles works the far side line. And the fourth official is Peter Pendergast of Jamaica, who was the referee for Canada's opening game, a 3-1 win over Honduras. So Alec Bunbury gets the start up front with Carlo Corazine. Alec Bunbury, you'll remember, came in in the second half of the opening game after facing all kinds of delays, getting from Portugal through a snowy New York to Los Angeles. The 1995 Canadian Player of the Year, Alec Bunbury, wearing number nine. And Tom Kusmanis, the odd man out, making way in midfield for Radzinski, who moves back there. Mr. Gutierrez from Costa Rica getting some final instruction. It'll be interesting to see this Brazilian side, as you suggest. No Brazilian side, regardless of its age, under 23, should be taken lightly. No, Canada cannot afford to take them lightly. As I said, they are seasoned professionals. They all play for professional clubs, and they have a great deal of experience. Of course, skill goes with putting on <laughs> that yellow shirt. And there is some skill by Alec Bunbury, the 28-year-old, plays for Maritimo in Portugal. Seven goals this season. Voted the top foreign player in all of Portugal. However, he missed some nine weeks of play between September and early December. He has 11 goals internationally for Canada as there is delay in starting this game at the LA Coliseum. Canada Graham has never done very well in this competition. They failed miserably in 91, again in 93. And now, after a 3-1 result, a spot in the semifinal really isn't that far away. It's very much within the grasp. We'll take a quick break as they sort out the balls. When we come back, we'll have the kickoff for you. Welcome back to Los Angeles Coliseum. Game two of this 96 Gold Cup as the referee, Ronald Gutierrez of Costa Rica, makes his way to the center spot, and we should be. Just about ready to get underway. There you see Carlo Corazine, who scored one goal against Honduras. Alec Bunbury will join him up front. It'll be interesting to see the way Canada approaches this game. He gets the first goal. He knows this is a young Brazilian side. And if he can get the first goal, he would feel that uh, they may just get their heads down a little. And right at midfield, it'll be Radzinski playing it forward for Corazin, and the young under-23 side of Brazil will pick up and get the first free kick. Luis. Adelson. Konzikau gives it up to... Lyndon Hooper, and now it's played wide. This is the captain, Colin Miller. And too far for Thomas Radzinski. 22-year-old Dida is the starting keeper for Brazil. 
as you said he probably has had 22 seven years of experience in a very high caliber in Brazil Radzinski through the middle Cooper lays it square this is Ian Frazier down to this right wing for Kevin Holness who had the two goals against Honduras Holness chips it into the middle over the head of Carlo Corazin and now cleared by Zimaria this is Radzinski Cooper is on his left he sides it through for Corazin looking for the offside and Dita comes out for Brazil and a little bump there by the skipper Narciso just put Carlo Corazin off balance not enough to draw the whistle but enough to put the Canadian striker off balance Zemaria Amaral tried to slide the ball through past Savio this is Holness Bunbury shields turns at midfield plays it back and now it's Kao Aronson Aronson with Holness and he'll leave it for Luis Luis turns inside oh my Luis Luis and just like that it's one nothing Brazil good play by Andre Luis he shrugs off the tackles from Carl Fletcher and just strokes it right inside the far post three red shirts Forrest screened bad start for Canada but four marks to Andre Luis sneaks it just inside the post 1-0 Brazil very quickly the Brazilians on the goal by Luis The goal coming in the third minute of play. Graham, it appears the Canadians have made a lineup change as well that we are unaware of. It looks like, and it is in fact, Carl Fletcher wearing number 23, playing at that central defender spot in place of Paul Finnick. Well, that's how they played in the second half against Honduras on Wednesday. We were told that Fennec would play, but obviously number 23, Carl Fletcher, on your screen now, is lining up alongside Frank Yellow. And it appeared to be Fletcher who was caught by Luis. In fact, really the back four of Canada was left standing around, and Luis walked in all alone and tucked it just inside the the far post one nothing Brazil after just three minutes Corazine Narciso over now Holmes gets a leg in on Erdelson oh and quickly over says Mr. Gutierrez This tackle from behind is obviously going to bring the whistle as Holness goes in and, and catches Arielsen on the left ankle. He fell awkwardly. Bad tackle and a bad fall for number 10, Arielsen. And he obviously is regarded as the star player. The number 10 in Brazil is the prized number, the prized shirt to wear. But Arielsen seems to be okay. Young Kevin Holness, unfortunately, gets the yellow card for that tackle. Quickly downfield, look at this. This is KO. The freak kick put KO in behind the back four of Canada, and it is 2-0 Brazil. And once again, there's no tackle. Fraser afraid to tackle. The ball slipped under 
Craig Forrest by Kale. Nice little touch, great balance, great skill. Fraser a little too late to get the foot in. Same as the first goal, no tackle, plenty of red shirts, and the yellow shirt puts it in the net. 2 0 for Brazil. And if you thought they were a bunch of kids, thinks again. And the second goal, two now in the first six minutes. Oh, the near side linesman Owen Powell of Jamaica giving the throw into Brazil after it appeared it was pushed out by the Brazilian defender. Frazier up. Now, how will the Canadians approach this? Trailing 2 0 after just six minutes. Fraser. Bunbury. Jeff Onger. Fraser nodding it up. Now volleyed forward. Looking for Carlo Corazine. It will be a throw in for Canada. He scored the second goal on a lovely through ball. Kayo at six minutes. Ian Fraser will take this corner. Thomas Radzinski and handled well by Dida. The Brazilian keeper. Luis. Narciso. Zemaria to midfield and he'll give it away. Jeff Onger. Razinski lays it off for the captain, Colin Miller. Carlo Corazin and Carlo Corazin is brought down, and he'll earn the free kick for Canada. They barely worked up a sweat, the Canadians, and they're down by two. Now, how does the game plan have change? Well, the, getting the first goal is out the window, that's for sure for Bobby. Now he's got to just make sure that they try and regain their composure, just chip away at this Brazil side and try and pull it back. Radzinski goes up and over the defender. Ian Fraser will leave it for Thomas Radzinski. Looking for Bunbury. This is Corazine. Corazine laid it back for number 14, Jeff Onger, and Dida got there in time. And you can hear the crowd in the Los Angeles Coliseum chanting, Dida, Dida. Certainly maintain Brazil's 2 0 lead with a super save. Radzinski's cross to the near post is volleyed away by Brazil. And then Colin Miller will give away the throw in on the far side. But that opportunity there showed that Canada can create chances against this Brazilian side. They just have to keep chipping away. They've got to be very careful, though, on breakaways. They don't leave one man on the front runner. One on one is deadly against Brazilians, no matter what the rage. Remember back to the games that Canada played against some of the World Cup teams prior to USA 94 and Bob Leonard Uzi suggested he didn't want his team to show these teams too much respect and I'm wondering if to start this game in the first six minutes he did they show, show them, them enough respect. Yeah they barely touched them and they exploded for two goals Brazil with the lead. There's some magic when you pull on that yellow shirt that makes under 23s become seasoned pros. The skill is inherent in Brazilians and it's just a treat to watch. Ian Frazier from the Sacramento Knights of the Continental Indoor Soccer League. 
Oh, another through ball, and well Trey read. Forrest in his 31st international for Canada out of Ipswich Town. Hooper is forced to retreat. And then Frazier upfield. Luis with the throw in for the captain Narciso. Consecao. Lovely ball for Emera. Cayo is in the middle. Savio makes a run. So does Aronson. This is Savio being followed by Frazier. Zimaria and Frazier step for step with Savio will head it into touch. Savio. And again, another throw in for Brazil. Zemaria. Amaral. And cleared away by the Canadians. Bunbury to Hooper. Alec Bunbury now looking for a little support. Goes square into the middle and well read by the Brazilian defender, Gemelli. Savio. Gemelli makes a run. So does Arrelson. And then not even close as it sails over the Canadian bar. Craig Forrest, the 28-year-old out of Ipswich Town. 1.40 goals against average internationally for Canada. 42 goals against in his 30 previous games. But Arrelson brings it back for Brazil. Arrelson. For Caio. Luis. Narciso. Brazil not at all afraid to go back into their own half just to keep possession. The way through was blocked by the red shirt, so they keep it and go back trying to draw the red shirts forward. But watch the movement off the ball. Oh, look at the run by Savio as he just ripped, simply runs around Yellow. Zemaria. This is Kyle. Oh, goodness, goodness. Savio. And it is 3 0 Brazil. This is an absolutely brilliant cross. And just look at Savio power in and head it as Carl Fletcher can only stand and watch. Brilliant first time cross, great run, powerful header, 3 0 Brazil, and that's a treat to watch. Savio made his run perfectly, powered the header pass for us, 3 0, and really, Canada, apart from that one shot, have never been in the game. The third Brazilian goal comes after just 14 minutes. 3-0, and that was spectacular. Narciso will start the Brazilians back again. Remember, the Brazilians are an invitee to this Gold Cup, looking for the offside, and these youngsters are fast. Savio with a leaping header to make it 3-0. Forrest downfield. Carlinos shaking his head, and so it will be a free kick for Canada. And while Carlinos shakes his head, it's Carlo Corazine that holds his.
Little push from behind as Carlo Corazin tries to chest that ball down. No question about the free kick. Little tap on the back of the head and let's see if Colin Muller hits this one. Frank Yallop standing there. Colin Miller, Pazinski over. Oh, and it skipped by and caught somebody on the wall, but Dita played it well. Well, the big goalkeeper looks very good so far. Been called upon twice, and he's been equal to the task more than adequately both times. That was a notable deflection, but he was well behind it with his body. Good hands. We've played 17 minutes of this opening half at the Los Angeles Coliseum, and it's 3-0 Brazil. This game has the look and feel right now of the game that Canada played against Mexico in the 93 Gold Cup, and they lost that one 8-0. Not a good start against these Brazilians. Costa Rican referee has gotten involved pretty quickly. Fonsecao for Carlinhos. To the captain, Narciso. Narciso steps around. Lyndon Hooper gets the ball and a foot in. Once again, they'll start it through Carlinhos. Kozika looks upfield, goes to the far side. It is absolutely lovely. He found Savio. And he's pushed off the ball by Carl Fletcher, the crowd looking for, and the Brazilians looking for the obstruction foul. They don't get it from Mr. Gutierrez. That's Amaral. Zemaria. Amaral. Javali. Narciso. This is Luis. Look at this. Still hooks it up and down the sideline, and Fletcher plays it back for Forrest. The flick forward doesn't work as Konsika plays it through the middle for Amaral to Kayo. Adelson and over the head of Jamelli, who had made the run for Brazil. Nice little run by Jamelli. Chip just a little too strong, and Craig Forrest read it well. But right now, Canada's back four, Fraser, Fennick, Yellop, and Miller are looking a little torn and tattered. Who can blame them? Alec, First start. Alec Bunbury chests it down. This is Holness. Gets away from the foot in of Savio. Radzinski. One on one with Zimaria, and then Zimaria. He'll give away the corner. 20 minutes have been played. And this is where Randy Samuel would have been useful. Paul Fennick would have been useful. Not all that much height in this Canadian team. Bradzinski, Dita follows it over. Fletcher gets up. Cleared away by Konsika. Bradzinski hooks it right back in, and Dita is there. Yallop for Hooper. Thomas Radzinski. Bunbury. Tried to hook it for Hooper, but it's Narciso who intercepts. Kayao. Savio. Couldn't get away from the sliding tackle. Throw in for Brazil. 
You may have read and heard one of the things that FIFA is considering is widening and making the goals a little wider, a little higher. Something else that's been talked about is to force teams to go forward is that once you bring it across midfield, you can't bring it back. And you wonder how that would affect a team like Brazil, a rule like that. Well, I don't think a team like Brazil need bigger goals, that's for sure. And it really wouldn't affect them. They're only doing this because the law allows them to do it right now. If they change the law, Brazil could adapt to that. There's no question about that. They're keeping possession in their own half, trying to stretch Canada out. But if it weren't allowed, they would just do the same thing in Canada's half. The ball control is brilliant, and the movement off the ball is excellent. And they're confident right now with a three-goal lead is as high as it can be. Little bump from Paolo Corazine on Luis. A foul against on Luis. Luis. A little bit of obstruction there, preventing Corazine from getting his foot to the ball. This is a good time, Frank Yellup, to slow them down. Don't rush it. Take a deep breath and count to ten, and let's start again. Yallop into the middle, and out comes Dita. And Dita looks good. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? He's, he's tall, flanky. Perfect flaky. so far. He's got good height, good hands. Seems to read the game well, as most Brazilians do. Uh-oh, uh-oh, my goodness. Frank Yallop could hear the footsteps. Cooper, side foot sit ahead. No call there for Mr. Gutierrez. They can't get this ball to settle. Now it will for Jeff Onger. For Miller to Radzinski and back to the Canadian captain. Now to Frank Yallop out of Ipswich Town. Comes near side. For Ian Fraser. Ooh, that was over the ball. That was a bad foul by Adelson, who just let Fraser clear it and then just went right over the ball and stamped on him. Referee wasn't in a position to call it, unfortunately. You could hear Ian Fraser go, ow. Narciso. Fosikau. The beauty about the Brazilian side is the ball carrier always has about three options. He's got about three players he can lay it off to. Whereas Canada right now are finding it tough to find one. Mario Zagallo, the head coach of this Brazilian under 23 team, their Olympic team that will Hopefully qualify. They have one more round of qualifying before Atlanta. Arielsen sent a beautiful ball through there, but Amarai didn't want to chase it. Number 10 looks really good. As I said, that number 10 is the prize possession for Brazilian players. Well, it just goes to show you again how important movement off the ball is. We always focus on the, the person with the ball, but unless somebody's making space, creating something, you've got nowhere to go. And the Brazilians do that wonderfully. They do it beautifully because they all have the confidence to want the ball. Radzinski to take this corner. Canada trailing 3 nothing. No danger. Yallop back and now plays it. Down this right sideline, Hooper is up, and the foul will be on Hooper. Kosakao. Narciso. Narciso to the far side. Zemaria. Cayo. Gives it away. This is Hooper now for Canada. For Jeff Onger. Frazier. Has a look near sideline. This is Carlo Corazino. Lovely tackle. As the captain Narciso 
came across to push it into touch. Brzezinski. Number four, Narciso, the Brazilian captain, having quite the battle with Alex Bunbury. So far, Alex hasn't won a ball in the air. Brzezinski. This is Bunbury, can't control. Cooper turns, it still rattles around outside the area. Fletcher chips it forward, Bunbury immediately surrounded by the three Brazilian players. This is a very big and very fast Brazilian 23-year-old team. It's remarkable. Well played, though, there by Frazier, who dummied the pass back, and Caio bought it. Rather uncharacteristic, that long clearance downfield, but there were only two defenders back, and Fraser did well to get to it first. You're right, this is a big-looking Brazilian side. It's also a very good-looking Brazilian side. One thing about Brazil, you always give them credit for their brilliant offense, but they've become very good at defending to get their midfield players back in a hurry now. They've learned the lesson over three, four World Cups, and they are very good at the back. Caio in front as the Brazilians come looking for number four. Final touch from Amaral there, not as good as the previous ones. The ball should have been cut back. Instead of that, he played it straight into Craig Forrest's arms. To midfield, Frazier for Canada. And just count the yellow shirts back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back already. Jose Maria loves to come forward, loves to overlap. And when he gets into that right-hand corner, we've seen he certainly knows how to cross it. Oh, strong. Good run here by Kunzikal. Miss hit by Aronson. And the crowd let him know that that was not a good effort. Good build-up, bad finish. This Brazilian crowd love their football they appreciate the football and they know their football they'll whistle for a bad move and applaud for the good ones no question about that Radzinski cuts it in over the head of both Corazin and Alec Bundry interesting the Canadians have flipped their their wingers Holness has gone to the far side now on the left wing and Radzinski has now come to this near side right wing for Canada I think simply because Zemaria overlaps a lot more than does Narciso so young Kevin Holness is a little better equipped to stop him coming forward on that right wing Corazzi Carlinhos marking him and it's cleared away by the Brazilians leading 3 nothing. oh look out and look out indeed, here comes Savio. Savio, the through ball for Caio. Oh, and Craig Forrest comes out. And how close was that to possibly being that dreaded red card for grabbing the player as he goes by? No, he didn't grab the player. Craig Forrest got to the ball first, and Caio followed through. Brilliant goalkeeping by Forrest. Have a look here. This will show you that Craig Forrest get to the ball and pushes the ball away. Caio left his leg in and tried to draw the penalty kick. Good decision by referee Ronald Gutierrez. But these Brazilians are so quick on the break. Brilliant ball laid square by Savio. Caio just accelerated into the space. Caio simply ran away from Ian Fraser. Fletcher with Caio on his back. 
Oh, you've just got nowhere to turn. And isn't it interesting if he tries to play it back? There's the yellow shirt of Savio in between him and where he might want to go. They just take all the angles away. The first touch is so good. The ball seldom bounces away from them. It's played slowly, played quickly, played waist high. The first touch is absolutely brilliant. And it sets up the second and third touch. Very seldom does it bounce away from them. It's so important that that first touch kills the ball. Look at this. Watch it and enjoy it. Zamaria for Cayo and Forrest will pick it up for Canada. And that's a danger that Canada will get into, that they're impressed with the ball being pushed around. They tend to be ball watching. Narciso through midfield. Cayo back. Harrelson can't get away. And the Canadians forced to retreat again. Over the head of Jeff Anger as Conseca steps up. This is Jamali. Offside. Offside. And offside is Cayo. Cayo just moved a little early as Jamali pushed it through. 3 nothing Brazil. We're still in the first half in Los Angeles. Goals at 3, 6, and 14 minutes. Luis, Cayo, and Savio. And Brazil leading Canada 3 0 in game two of this 96 Gold Cup from the Los Angeles Coliseum. Near sideline, Luis. Oh, he gets away from Radzinski. Luis cuts it. Oh, my goodness. Craig Forrest does well to keep it from being four. But as we saw in the goal by Savio, anything that goes in front, whether it be at feet or in the air, is dangerous. with the throw in for Radzinski. <laughs> Luis, it squirts to Radzinski and another throw in for Canada. One thing we're seeing this Brazilian side do that we are not accustomed to seeing is they pressure the ball carrier or the person receiving the ball really well. They niggle, they jab, they bump, and they tackle firmly. That's not a trait you used to expect from Brazil, but you can expect it now. They are tough. Radzinski, it's flicked back to Hunter. Wasn't quite sure whether to hit it with his right foot or his left foot. I think the left foot would have been better but it's not Jeff's favorite. But that's the second opportunity for Jeff Anger. The first forced Dita into a save. <laughs> Far sideline. Hooper giving chase as Jamelli makes the run. And Amaral had not come up to support. Colin Miller throws it back for Forrest. And these long balls upfield are not really having much success. The Brazilian defense just as good in the air oh, right as they there. are on the ground. Bunbury has yet to win a ball in the air, and of course, Corazin and Radzinski aren't going to win too many. Holness tried to slide it for Hooper, but it was Adelson that intercepted. Oh, my goodness. In full stride was Kayo, and thankfully, Frank Yellop got the foot in to stop him. 
Ooh. Bunbury sidesteps Marciso. Radzinski gets it across. Sandita is there for Brazil. Nosakau. Gemelli. Zimaria. Gemelli. Volleys it forward and a little too far for Amaral. <laughs> to midfield. Getting up well was Corazine in between the two Brazilians. It skips away from Bunbury. Kozakau. Brazil will work it out. They, they just refuse to knock these long balls downfield unless there's no alternative. Jeff Andrew, Frazier, the shirts can... Bob Leonard Uzi quickly off the bench. Frazier has a look, chips it forward. Bunbury trying to hook it. And once again, number four, Narciso having a little kick. And this time, referee Ronald Gutierrez picking it up. He really is niggling when Bunbury collects the ball. Number four really clips at the ankle. Frazier chips it through. Hollinger got his head to it and just by that far post. Good try by Jeff Unger, unfortunately, the angle was all wrong. Couldn't quite get it on target. But I must say, even if he gets it on target, it looks as if it will be tough to beat this keeper. Boy, does he look good. Tall, elegant, confident. Corazine. Carlinhos is there for Brazil. Tough to know what's going through Bobby's mind. Down 3-0. What do you do now? Colin Miller can throw it right into the penalty spot. But you've got to win it in the air then. And a little push negates the pressure. It's hard to believe uh, when you think of Brazilian soccer, Brazilian football in the championships, four World Cups and countless other cups and titles. One thing they have never won is the Olympic gold medal. And this is what this team hopes to do. Well, I tell you what, they're on the right track. This is how they look at 23. I'd love to see them at 27. And won't they be allowed to add I think it's upwards of three players from their full national side. Are they not allowed to do that? I, I know that they've got three of the under 23 side that they can that they didn't bring over. Juninho, for one, who plays for Middlesbrough. Carlos and Ronaldo, who plays for PSV. Look out. Jamali chips it, and it'll go off of Frank Yallop. So there's still more depth to this Brazilian Olympic side than we've seen right here in a 3 0 lead. Oh, yeah. Their star player is Juninho, playing in the Premier Division for Middlesbrough. Ronaldo, is, who's having a great season for PSV, and Carlos in Italy. Incredible young talent. Savio, who has the third goal, punched away by Forrest. And Holness will bring it up the far sideline for Canada. Corazine, Zimaria, yeah, over to help out for Brazil. Oh, what a lovely bit of footwork to turn and to Zimaria. Jamelli, Harrelson, this is Luis who sidesteps Fraser. I don't think Carl Fletcher wanted that ball. I don't think Frank Gallup wanted it back. Looks like Craig will have to get it. Under the pressure of Savio. Colin Miller. For Hooper. Kalinos is there to mark him. Miller. 
Corazine with Narciso. Rosicao. And that's the first time we've seen the Brazilian defense show a little bit of immaturity. If in doubt, get it out. Well, that's always <laughs> the, the safe standard, isn't it? This is Bunbury. Won't turn. Into the middle and then nodded away by Arlson. Oh, the foot up by Kayao. Well, Kayao's not going to get the free kick against him. It's going to go against Onger, and quite rightly so. Took his eye off the ball, just barged into Kayao. Colin Miller at midfield, 3-0 Brazil. <laughs> Zemaria. Jamali. And the push from behind by Colin Miller. On Amaral. And the yellow card. So two bookings against Canada. Colin Miller becomes the second. And young Kevin Holness was booked for coming in from behind. Anything coming in from behind these days is whistled down and 50 percent then results in a yellow card. Good shielding by Amaral. Colin Miller had had enough of it, said I'm gonna go right through you to get the ball. Unfortunately, it brought the free kick. Very frustrating when players shield the ball as well as Brazil do. If you're a defender, you're dying to get at that ball and just know where you can get past the behind of the yellow shirt. Or the blue pants, perhaps, I should say. Colin Miller. Out of Dunfermline in the Scottish first. Dunfermline going to get uh, make it up to the Premier. Well, they've got a chance. Very tight in the Scottish First Division this year. There's about five clubs all in with a chance of going up. Radzinski lays it back for Miller. Onger is square. He goes back into the middle for Radzinski. Corazine looking for some help. Moving up is Fraser. Fraser now chips it. Bunbury gets up. And no danger for Brazil or their keeper Dita. We're into injury time in this first half. 3 0 Brazil. Corazine. Corazine. Oh, he was looking for a little help and then took his eye off the ball and it ran away from him. And the captain, Colin Miller, a little frustrated, I think as the ball will run to him into injury time here in this first half. Bunbury for Hooper. Look to slide it through for Jeff Onger. And there's the whistle from Mr. Ronald Gutierrez to end his first half. The first half that saw Brazil score three goals, as you can plainly see. And certainly this Brazilian so-called under 23 side very good value for that three goal lead 45 minutes complete it's been all brazil here in game two for canada at the gold cup in los angeles welcome back to tsn's coverage of this 1996 gold cup from the la coliseum ready to start this second half Vic Router along with Graham Leggett, the referee, Mr. Ronald Gutierrez of Costa Rica, checks the watch, 3-0 Brazil. And as he checks the watch, we'll check the field closely to see if the Canadians have made any substitutions. They're allowed three. Initial glance is that they have not. And Forrest out and quickly going down, it appears to be Amaral. 
And that was Amaral's own fault. I hate to be callous, but he followed through onto Craig Forrest and came out second best. Bit of an actor, though. He went down like that in the first half and came up quickly against the referee. Give him a little sympathy. Graham, one substitution we get word of. Jeff Onger is out of the game as we watch Amaral go through and collide with Forrest. And into the game, wearing number 15 for Canada, is John Limniatis. Same substitution that we saw in the second half against Honduras, midway through the second half, when Jeff got a little knee injury. There's Amaral, all fit and ready to come back on again. Fletcher to this near sideline for the captain, Colin Miller. Frazier. Looking for Bunbury, and then Bunbury is brought down. And a tackle from the captain, Narciso. Narciso is very good at coming in from behind and just clipping your ankle. That's about five, six times he's done it. He's been called twice. If you're going to get away with it, keep doing it. The skipper certainly has got a lot of experience for an under-23 player. There's Libniatis to take this free kick, the 28-year-old out of the Montreal Impact of the APSL. Chips it. Dita loses control and then reaches out to grab it in front of Colin Miller. Luis. What a lovely ball to find Arlson. And then offside, near side linesman Owen Powell of Jamaica making the call. Frank Yallop will start the Canadians back. Frazier, Savio giving chase. What would you want the Canadians to do now to start this? You're down 3 nothing. second half. Quite truthfully, I get no idea. This Brazilian side seems to have no weaknesses. It's not as if you can say, let's let's try and get past them on the right flank or the left flank. The, the fullbacks are brilliant. The centre-backs are winning everything in the air. The midfield players are pressuring Canada's midfield players, and the front-runners are getting very little joy out of their back three. So uh, right now, I have no idea what Bobby would try and do. I do know that Canada just has to get the next goal. <laughs> that will be a lot easier said than done. Another foot left in, and you possibly saw Bunbury go down for Canada. But the first touch is the thing that is the difference between these sides, along with the, most of the other skills. Brazilians' first touch is absolutely brilliant. Canada's first touch has been letting them down all game. Well cut out by Craig Forrest. It appeared that it was Luis that got through and then standing at the far post, ready for any rebound, was Caio. Holness plays it back. Yallop has a look and comes to the near side for Colin Miller. Corazine. In for Bunbury. Beautiful. Played well by Kaskow. Limniatis. Fletcher. Miller. At midfield, still early, second half, 3 0 Brazil. And Canada doing nothing that would show they're on their way back. Gemelli. Arlson. Hooper to mark him. Luis Jamelli square for Harrelson. A little ambitious, perhaps, but it shows the confidence this young Brazilian side has. Number 10, Harrelson, not afraid to chance his arm from way out. 
One thing you've got to admire about this Brazilian side is that they never get stretched out. They're always solid. The forwards come back and help in defense. The defenders come up and help in attack. Very, very seldom do you see gaps between the back and the front. Caio turns near side. Zimaria. Lovely ball, Caio, who scored the second goal. Carlinhos, the captain. Narciso, Amaral, sidesteps Rudzinski. We've played six minutes of the second half. Javelli, far post and headed away by Frazier. Zemaria, Radzinski to mark him, Zemaria. Zemaria looks like a winger. He's got the skills of a winger and plays like a winger. Left or overlap. Reminds me a lot of the first team right back, Leonardo who played in the World Cup and was unfortunate to get sent off against the U.S., now playing in Japan. Looks very much like him, plays very much like him. Miller chips it forward, has Korozin. Redzinski overlaps, Korozin goes back. Miller, wrong way, fellas. Forrest back to Miller and back to Forrest. And the Brazilians just take things away from you. They pressure so well. Amaral making the run. Zamaria back into the middle. Back to Amaral. And he can't keep it in play. Throw in for Canada. Miller. Bunbury Shields lays it back. Quickly under pressure. Limniatis did well to control and play it back for Yallop. Miller. Waving his forwards downfield, and now he'll play it forward. It sneaks through to Bunbury, but he's offside. He was offside when the ball was played. The fact that it came up, big number five, Flavia Consecao means nothing at all. Savio. And Lyndon Hooper getting a little frustrated as he too went through Savio to try and prevent him shielding the ball. Bunbury. Try to find Corazine. Oh my goodness. That's the first first touch we've seen Brazil miss. Jamelli missed it. This Gold Cup, nine teams. The Brazilians are the invitees, and it will be Zimaria who gets booked by Mr. Gutierrez of Costa Rica. And Mr. Gutierrez is being consistent. No attempt to play the ball as Thomas Radzinski had gone past the fullback. So Zimaria gets the yellow card. Zimaria, 22, plays for Portuguesa. Good looking player. Down the sideline, nine teams in three groups of three. The three first place teams will go through to the semifinals as well as the best second place team. And so this game all important for Canada if they hope to qualify. They needed at least a tie, you would think. Having won their first game three to one. Second place would probably come down to goals for or against. And with three against the hopes of qualifying all but nil. Bunbury. Having said that, you can't fancy Honduras chances against Brazil in the final game in this group, can you? In fact, you can't fancy anybody's chances against Brazil, Mexico perhaps, although we've not seen them, and the United States with the 
local support might give them a run, but this Brazilian side looks very strong. All round, it looks strong. Savio down the near sideline. Couldn't keep it in play. Mexico opened with a 5 nothing win over the Grenadines. Coming into the game, this is our first look at Niall Thompson out of the Montreal Impact. Niall Thompson is into the game for Canada. Kevin Holness is out. back for Bunbury. Miller is there if he needs some help. He'll lay it back now for Yallop. Nicely done. Limniatis. Limniatis plays it square for Radzinski. Radzinski withstands Kakao's challenge and it'll run and be a throw in for Canada. Radzinski. Flicked, oh goodness, Bunbury. It looked like flicked it back towards the near post and it nearly snuck by Dita. <laughs> Niall Thompson national team member since 1993. One goal in now his seventh appearance. Bredzinski, Bunbury, Hooper all played it back and it was Jamelli there for Brazil. Given away, Bunbury. No foul for Mr. Gutierrez. Good call. Malik looking for the foul instead of going after the loose ball. Amaral through the middle, Jamelli. Oh, this is Savio. This is Amaral. Offside. Two of them offside. One on the wing, one in the middle. Amaral's the one they called. Cayo in the middle wasn't influencing the play, but there were two yellow shirts in an offside position. Owen Powell from Jamaica being kept busy on this near touchline. Colin Miller, Niall Thompson. And the throw in will go to Brazil. Chimeli, Zimaria. Savio, Carlinhos, Luis, and intercepted by Fraser as they look to hit Aronson through the middle. Libniatis, controlled well, played back for Niall Thompson. Looking for Hooper, offside, far side, Eric Zeferin from the Netherlands Antilles. doesn't have the same pace either by with the Brazilians up by three as they did to start the first half. Thompson flicks it forward to Bunbury. And too far. Gallup playing it forward. Looking for Carlo Corazine. We've played 15 minutes. Of this second half, it remains 3-0. Brazil ahead of Canada. To the 
this near side for Zimaria. Shielded by Kyle. And now Kyle forced to chase for Brazil. Kyle ahead to Amaral, and it was Colin Miller on his heels. Amaral. Kozakau. And downfield to Forrest. One of the few times we've seen no Brazilian in sight. Well, one of the few times we've seen them try to hit a 50-yard ball. Obviously not the 40, but they really get back in a hurry and get goal side of the ball. Look at the yellow shirt back already. At least seven. Limdiata skips it through, looking to that far post. Did it as well for Brazil. Bob Leonard Uzi. Missing four of his regulars. Paul Pesky Solito from Stoke. Randy Samuel of Port Vale. Nick Dasovich, who plays in the French third division, and Mark Watson of the Vancouver 86ers. Four members of the side who would be in the starting lineup of any Canadian national team. They handled Honduras 3-1, but have been under pressure right from the opening whistle against Brazil and trail 3-0. Three goals within 14 minutes left this Canadian side shocked. Bunbury. Has Radzinski on his right, tried to slide it through the middle, comes back, now it's Yalop for Frazier. Radzinski, Frazier, Limniatis is to his left. He'll chip it forward and over the head of Bunbury, who tried to hook it down and could not. Through the middle, look at the one-touch passing as the Brazilians work it out neatly. And then it was just a bad finish, Jamelli on that far side. Yallop. Skips towards Thompson. Zamaria clears. Amaral. KO is KO as he goes down on tackle. No call from Gutierrez. Good tackle by Colin Miller. Much the same as Narciso has been doing to Alex Bunbury. Got the ball, just left his foot in a little bit. He's run by Amaral as he got around Frank Yallop. But it's so tough to penetrate this Brazil defense. They get back goal side. They pick the men up. They pressure the ball carrier. Libniatis has a look. Thompson makes the angled run. So does Corozin. Neither get there, and it'll run through to Dida. Mario Zagallo must be delighted with the performance of his youngsters in this evening at the Los Angeles Coliseum. As I said in the halftime show, that first 45 minutes was as good as I've seen a team play for a long, long time. Especially a team that's supposed to be as inexperienced as this one. Oh, they showed us something, didn't they? Zemaria Amaral. Oh, 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 Carlinhos, Carlinhos. And he turned one way. The ball just unkindly ran away from him under a little bit of pressure from Lyndon Hooper. There's never a little bit of pressure from Lyndon Hooper. There's always a lot of pressure from Lyndon Hooper. His sister, Charmaine, member of Canada's Women's World Cup team. She was voted the Women's Player of the Year. Jamelli. Jamelli's the ball winner in midfield. He's the one who gets in for the tackles. He's the one who gets in for the 50-50 balls. Not so constructive as the other midfield players, more destructive, Jamelli. 
20 minutes gone and number 20 is on the ball Thompson for Miller Limniatis and back boy they close quickly Miller barely has close. a chance to to think and somebody's there they fill the gaps they, they they take away the options from the ball carrier they give them one option and normally that's back Miller this is Bunbury look at this Radzinski Thomas Radzinski and Canada is on the board it's three to one beautiful ball led back by Lyndon Hooper to Thomas Radzinski who walks past the defenders and cracks it just inside the far post as Dida stretches in vain. Beautiful finish by Thomas Radzinski. Three to one and Canada's got that goal they were looking for. Brilliant skills. Number 13, Carlinhos left in Radzinski's wake as he finds the bottom corner. Thomas now, Radzinski scores in the 66th minute for Radzinski. In this his sixth international game for Canada scores his first and of course Radzinski out of Gemelekeren in the Belgian first division where he has eight goals this season the former Canadian soccer league all-star Thomas Radzinski scores Canada's first it's three to one and look at this as if they want to turn it up this is KO Twenty two year old Thomas Radzinski. Side footed back Radzinski forward. This is Hooper and Carlinhos is there to defend for Brazil. Radzinski following up. Oh lovely ball. Lovely ball. This is Niall Thompson square Thompson. Oh, oh Thompson. Nearly snuck it in the near post and a diving Dita got there in time. And he needed all six foot three. Just got it by the fingertips as that ball took a vicious deflection. And the big keeper got across beautifully. Oh, Hooper tried to hook it back and could not. Kayo. Kayo has a look. He plays it square. Amaral. Zimaria. Jamelli makes the run. That's where the ball goes. Jamelli back to Zamaria. Amaral through for Savio. And Jamelli cleared now to midfield. The Canadians seem to have picked up their game. It's played square. Following up is Yellow. Oh, and it's offside. Carlo Corazine. Carlo Corazin saying big number 13 Carlinhos was standing in the middle. Referee Ronald Gutierrez says no arguing. I blew the whistle. Offside free kick Brazil. And as usual they try and work it out from the back. Always seems to be a man available. But no red shirt within 10 yards. That's the strength of Brazil finding space. Ooh. Oh, lovely Savio. And well done by Colin Miller to head it back to Craig Forrest so he could pick it up. Really, Craig Forrest has had nothing to do in this half as Brazil have been cruising a little bit. Once you get into that cruise mode, it's pretty tough to raise your game again. Once again, Bunbury beaten in the air by the Brazilian defender. Amaral, Niall Thompson. Oh, what a lovely tackle by Niall Thompson to reach around. Oh, well played. Savio, square. Arlson, Forrest. Twenty-five minutes have been played, and the Brazilians come close to getting number four. Just when I said. Craig Forrest had little to do this half. He comes up with two big saves. Parried the first one from Arielson, then got in the way of the rebound. That's oh, unlucky. Corazine. Oh, 
Oh, Hooper nearly caught there, and it's hooked away just in time. Yellick. Fletcher. Turns and gets away from Kyle. Bunbury. Look at this. Little Lyndon Hooper. Hooper. Kozikow is there to defend and pushes it into touch. Good tackle by the big number five. Had to make sure that he got the ball coming in from behind. Take a little breath, Thomas. Radzinski looking for Bunbury. Carlinos ahead taller, nods it away. Radzinski, look at this. Oh, my goodness. Three Canadians just D to the keeper, and he was the one that got there first. No contest, I'm afraid. There could have been five Canadians there. The big tall goalkeeper reads the game well, comes off his line well, no contest. Oh, off of the Canadian Niall Thompson, throw in for Brazil. Zamaria. Jameli. Brought down by John Limniatis. They love to get the free kick taken quickly. They'll play it short, they'll knock it square. Very seldom will they hit a long ball from a free kick. They like to build up, get people following up to support. Oh, Kyle standing his ground. Lyndon Hooper, who had moved back to help out. Bunbury at midfield. Comes all the way across. Niall Thompson. Colin Miller makes the run down the left wing. Thompson cuts to the middle. Thompson. Niall Thompson trying to do it himself. And right idea, just too many, too many moves. What an elegant player, number six, Henri Louise. He just dummied Lyndon Hooper there right out of his shoes. The workhorse, Jamelli, always available. Amaral through the middle. This is Consecao. Zumaria. Thompson gets away from him. Jamelli. Oh, trying to slide it up for Savio. Also, Kayao was making the run. It didn't get through. Zumaria. In the middle, Savio. Kayao. Cuts it across, headed straight up in the air. Savio goes up, hooked away by Fletcher. Arlson is there, battling with Lyndon Hooper. Fonsecao. Amaral. Zimaria. Zimaria. Oh, Niall Thompson. You know well, something, the unfortunate thing is he, he looked like the Canadians had won the ball and he pushed him after. Well, they had won the ball, the ball but look, no question that that was a free kick against Niall. Unfortunately, had he stayed back, there was going to be a free kick given against Zimaria, who was going to... Oh, look at this, look at this, Kyle! Oh, unlucky, tried to chip it over Craig Forrest. Just like Dita at the other end, Craig Forrest, a little too tall for that move. Play on, says Mr. Gutierrez. Amaral. Lyndon Hooper giving chase. Now it is Miller. Will get in the way. Throw in for Brazil. Late 30 minutes, second half. Canada's on the board. Thomas Rosinski. It's 3 1 Brazil. Well read, well played, Craig Forrest. Big number four, Narciso doesn't take any prisoners, does he? Alex Bunbury's had a very, very tough evening against the skipper for the Brazilian side. And it looks as if we're going to get a substitute. Number 11, Savio, who's had an excellent game. Scored a brilliant header for goal number three, comes off. And number 20, Leonardo, Leonardo. Leandro. 
is in wearing number 20. Nodded away. Niall Thompson. Oh, and Dita. Right on been... the edge of the box, he came out to cut down that angle. Great Could've... goalkeeping. Boy, does he look good. Been in better position. But the confident swagger has gone a little bit from the Brazilians. They're starting to chase now. Instead of causing the red shirts to chase. That's a good sign for Bobby, although down 3-1, it still looks a pretty hopeless task. Brazil is in control. 3-1 over Canada. Welcome back to TSN's coverage of this 1996 Gold Cup from the Los Angeles Coliseum. Vic Router along with Graham Leggett. And the Canadians right now playing a man short as Carlo Corazin has gone to the sideline for treatment after being tackled by Narciso. And it's not the first time Narciso has clipped somebody, Grim. He's very clever at it, and if he's getting away with it, then why not keep doing it? He tackled with one foot, then followed through and just hacked Corazin with the other foot. Referee didn't call it, so he'll keep doing it. Leandro, the substitute, called for the offside. Oh, there she goes kicking. Colin Miller. I don't think Canada's won a ball in the air when it gets to the danger area. Flicked forward, and Corazine is back for Canada. Miller nods it up, looking for Bunbury. Certainly hasn't had a lot of success in the air. A little nudge by Amaral. Spotted this time by referee Gutierrez. Good run by Niall. But Thompson kept in play. Leandro shields it well to get away from Fletcher. Now Chamelli. Making the run on the far side is Arelson. They have great vision, don't they? I mean, they see people making runs. And they're not afraid to go and find them. The other guy's like, how about I went for you, right? Just throw it away. Miller. Corazine does well to control. And the Addis follows up. This is Thompson. Thompson chips it. Bunbury over his head again. Can't get up against Luis. Still grimacing, still in pain. And on that right ankle that was clipped, Carlo Corazin. Played 35 minutes. Second half, 3-1 Brazil. trying to get away from Luis and Kent. Amaral tried to side foot it through, looking for Leandro. Following up now, Zamaria. Zamaria, down this right wing, Zamaria. Thompson is over, Zamaria. And it's Frank Yellup who gets to the near post and nod it away for Canada. Great run once again by number two, Zamaria, the right back. I'm not sure if Carlo Corazin is 100% right now. That was a nasty rap he took on the ankle, and not quite sure who Bobby could bring on if he has to bring Car Carlo off. Carlo Corazin, who plays with Cambridge United of the English Third Division, has 11 goals this season. Not too many strikers left on the bench for Bobby. In fact, I don't think there are any. So Ian Carter could do a job if they moved them up there. He could rumble them around. A little clutch and grab and maybe a little frustration from Alec Bunbury.
to midfield. Niall Thompson. Zimaria. Miller over to mark him. Look at this. Leandro trying to sneak through. Didn't take Leandro long to get into the game, did it? They all want the ball. Every single player in this Brazilian side are so confident they want the ball all the time. Oops. Oh, no. Another booking, this time to Carl Fletcher. And John Lemoniad is saying, look, play it both ways. If you're going to book Fletcher, have a look at Narciso when he goes in. No question that Fletcher followed through a little late, but certainly Leandro made a meal of it. In fact, it was the dive afterwards that brought the yellow card, not the tackle. Amaral finds Zemaria. Zemaria, oh, it skips by. And Kyle couldn't control. But it was the attempted header through the middle that was missed. I tell you, for a fullback, Zimaria crosses a beautiful ball, curves it just enough to take it away from the defenders. Amaral. Arlson. Are also just oh, cheeky heels and straight back. But Jamelli is always available. If anybody's stuck, and very seldom are they. Well, that just floated. Somehow got caught in the air, and it floated over the head of Kyle. You can do it. So can Alec Bunbury, who heels it back. Fletcher under some pressure. Hits it square. Colin Miller. No bell. Thompson, Miller, Fletcher is to his right. Frank Yellup. Thompson controls it well. Thompson to the far post for Bunbury and over his head. Oh, but it goes off Luis for a Canadian corner. Radzinski. Corazine. Hooper. Well cut out by Flavio Concecao. Beautifully read. Zimaria calling for it. Look at this. Right, Leandro. A mile offside. And I think he's going to get the yellow yeah. card. No question about that. Wasting time, rolling it past Craig Forrest. Leandro, the substitute, gets booked for ungentlemanly conduct, and quite rightly so. Canadians looking for the foul call there as Leandro goes into the book. Radzinski goes down. No call from Mr. Gutierrez. Pretty silly booking for Leandro. No need to roll the ball past Forrest and. Uh, if he gets booked in the semi-final, then he'll miss the final, because it's almost certain that this Brazilian side will do well in this competition. Radzinski, Yallop, Arlson was there, now it's lay down the wing, looking for Limniatis. Interesting. Where Hooper is dropped back, uh, not Hooper, but Bunbury will almost drop back into midfield looking to pick up the balls rather than being knocked to him, pick them up on the run. Trying to find a little room. Now Ciso's been up his back all game. He's trying to see if he gets room to turn and go at people. Well played. Jamelli. Leandro is on his left. Okay. He'll come to the okay. right. Zimaria. Now that was more like a fullback. Crosses the ball like a winger, shoots like a fullback. Good player, so I like him. Loves to come forward, wants the ball. I think his 
better choice would have been to aim for the far post. He was always going to hit this ball. He had no intentions of trying to cross it. Number seven, Kaya, would have been offside anyway. Fraser. Oh, well played. Laid off. Oh, oh Radzinski. Oh, and it tug. skips away unkindly from Bunbury, but Radzinski, you're right. Somebody just grabbed him as he went through and threw him off balance. But that's the first ball that Canada's won in the box. A little nudge there by Carl Fletcher. About two minutes remaining. Three to one, Brazil. Gemelli. There he goes again. Look at Zamaria. Zamaria cuts it back. Leandro, and it's 4 1, Brazil. Another brilliant run by number two, right back, Zimaria. Great vision as he rolls it square, right into the path of Leandro. Easy tapping, but this is Zimaria's goal. All Leandro has to do is get in the way of it. Canada cut, pushing forward, the three Brazilian players break, and Amaral celebrates, 4-1. And it looked as if Brazil really turned up a gear there, switched into high gear, cut Canada moving forward, and the rest is history. Leandro scores in the 88th minute, the fourth for Brazil. Uh oh, Thompson gives it away. Amaral, look at Leandro, and it just went behind him. Leandro is Kyle. Makes the run. Here comes Harrelson for Kyle. Forrest is out in the offside flag. Near side linesman Owen Powell from Jamaica. You guys got to go. Limniaris to midfield. Yallop. Limniaris. Yallop makes a run, Hooper is in the middle. Oh, we tried to use Hooper as the decoy and slide it through. Look at this big lumbering run now by Luis for Jamali. Leonandro is in the middle. Back for Narciso. And my forced here in the 45th minute. Craig Forrest at the near post. That was a really good save by Craig Forrest. The ball was hit right along the ground. Awkward ball to handle. Two Brazilian shirts waiting for the rebound, which didn't come. But it looks as if Brazil have had the breather and are back on form again. Just cruising now to the it, final whistle. Injury time at the LA Coliseum. Jamelli onside. Yes. They're coming for more. Kayo, far post. Mr. Gutierrez checks his watch. Radzinski, Bunbury is in the middle, but it won't get through. It's not a CISO clears for Brazil. Limniadis for Yallop and back. One last chance. Dita's there for Brazil, and that's it. It was never in doubt. Never in doubt from the third minute, the brave performance, but Brazil in a different class as they cruise through four to one. Canada now. 
will need some breaks if they hope to qualify for the semifinals at the Gold Cup in Los Angeles.